Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dark Dark World. I'm Jordan Crittenden, and this is the Dark Dark Vlog. And I've just gotten done reading yet another in a series of emails from you guys asking for my take on the Gabby Petito case. Um, I'm flattered by that. I really am. I like that you guys um, care to hear my takes on stuff like this. Uh, I'm flattered. But I've been sort of hesitant to give my thoughts simply because I'm not really sure what take there is to have. Uh, you know, you've got a tragic story of a young woman murdered, almost certainly by her boyfriend, who is now on the lam. There you have it. Uh, the other reason that I'm the other reason that I've been hesitant to do this was because there's already so much coverage of this case. Before I started recording, I googled it again and saw that you know just within the last couple of hours there are already dozens of new articles. Uh, I say new, newly published, but they're all covering the same thing that they've been covering for weeks now, and so that was another reason why I wasn't sure. Uh, but speaking of the coverage of this case, that sort of gave me a way in here, I think, because rather than give my take on the Gabby Petito case, which I already have said I don't really think there's much of a take to have, uh, I've decided to give my take on the coverage of the Gabby Petito case instead. So. The coverage I find to be a bit problematic. Uh, as, as I mentioned, it's widespread, it's ongoing, it's been happening for weeks now, just article after article after article after social media post after video after, you know, something like this. There's so much of it. <clears throat> and it got me to thinking about the, the late Gwen Eiffel, R.I.P. Gwen, uh, uh, who coined the term sort of famously, uh, missing white woman syndrome. Uh, and this syndrome, of course, is something that the media catches when we have these sort of high profile missing white woman cases. Of course, Gabby Petito no longer missing. She were certain that she was murdered, but when the case started, certainly the media was guilty of, of having some missing white woman syndrome. And of course, what, what Gwen Ifill was talking about was the fact that the media will glom on to these cases and just the, the coverage that they give these cases is wildly incommensurate with the coverage that they will give to uh, missing women of color. So case in point here, it, right? So you let me just list a couple of things, right? So just to bring you into Gwen's and my way of thinking on this. So you've got Elizabeth Smart, Natalie Holloway, uh, Lacey Peterson, Gabby Petito, um, Madeline McCann, even JonBenet Ramsey to a certain extent. You, you see what I mean. There aren't a lot of women that you can point to, women of color, where we've had big, big cases like that, right? And that's not by accident. That's because the media didn't cover them. Certainly not the way that they covered the cases of the women that I've just listed. So why is that? Well, I think it's a vicious cycle, and I'll, I'll come to that, but the University of Wyoming released a study that showed that 710 indigenous people went missing from the state of Wyoming between the years of 2011 and 2020. Why is Wyoming relevant? Well, because that, of course, is where the remains of Gabby Petito were discovered, right? So 710 indigenous persons went missing from Wyoming, and I'm pretty certain that not one of you can tell me any of their names, and that's fine. I couldn't tell you their names either. But there's a reason for that, right? It's because it wasn't covered. And why wasn't it covered? Well, that's what we're kind of trying to get to here, right? Is, is it the chicken or the egg thing? Are we getting so much coverage about Gabby Petito and about the missing white women in general because the media is shoving it down our throats? Or are the media reporting it because we have this thirst for it, this appetite, right? 
and I, and I think it's both, right? The media is only covering it because you're going to read it. You want to watch it. You search for this video, probably. Um, but at the same time, you're not going to have stuff to watch if the media is not putting it out there as well, right? So I think it's a problem. I, I think, I mean, I was looking at earlier on uh, when the case w was sort of newer, just like some weeks back, I remember seeing a Gabby Petito article, I think it was when she was still missing, right alongside an article about Haitian immigrants being rounded up by border police on horseback at the border. You may have seen that story, but the number of views and, and you know clicks, likes, all that stuff was so disproportionate. The Gabby Petito case, that article was wildly, <laughs> wildly more viewed than the one about the Haitian immigrants. And it's sort of interesting, right? Because it's like, why is the life of one young white woman more interesting to us than the lives of so many troubled Haitian immigrants there? I don't know. You guys tell me, of course, that's what I'd like the vlog to be, is something sort of interactive. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it's problematic? I mean, I don't think you can argue that it's not uh, disproportional, right? Um, so even though we have people of color going missing at a much higher rate than, than white people, the coverage of the white people that goes missing is, is completely disproportionate. There's so much more of it. So why do you think that is? I've sort of given my, my take on it. And I, I mentioned this back on, I think it was episode four of Dark Dark World, way back, early days, uh, when I did the Beast of Columbia, the Luis Garavito story. And we talked about how, you know, how was this guy able to kill 100 boys? Hundreds of boys, I should say. It was more than 100. Uh, how is he able to do that without it just being this widespread media story? Well, that's because, I think, we determined on that episode that the victims weren't white. And, you know, that, that ties into this. It's the Gwen Eiffel thing, right? Missing white woman syndrome. If you're white and you go missing, there's going to be an appetite for your story, and the media will cover it. If you're not, you might not be so lucky. Um, and that's a problem. And we need to sort of call it out, or at least be aware of it, in, in what we choose to read, what we choose to look at. That's my thought on it anyway. What are your thoughts? Do you think that's right? Do you think that I've uh, hit the nail on the head there? Or do you think there's some other reason that the Gabby Petito case is more important than others? Or even if you don't want to say that it's more important than others, is there a reason why it's deserving of, of all this coverage? Now, you could say, hey, Jordan, the only reason I'm into the case now is I want to know where this boyfriend is. Because that's kind of interesting, right? How have they not got this guy, right? How is this guy still going? Um, so that's interesting, you know. Um, and look, I don't want anyone to feel like you're being chastised here. I'm calling you out like shame on you for being interested in the Gabby Petito case. Not at all. As I've already said, of course you would be because you're getting inundated with all these articles and all these clickbaity things, right? So, and, and here I am talking about it as well. So, really, no, no shame in being interested in it. Uh, I just want you to think about the reasons why you are interested in it and the reasons why there is so much coverage of it and not coverage of other things. And that even when there is coverage of other things, such as, you know, uh, the Haitian immigrants and, and the border police, why that's not as interesting to you as Gabby Petito. So those are the questions that I'm putting to you all. I hope that this will suffice for a take on the Gabby Petito case, because really this is all I've got. And uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and certainly comment and interact at the bottom. That was the whole point of this. I want to get your feedback, your takes, and we can have a conversation. That's the purpose of the Dark Dark Vlog. Nothing extra for the patrons today. Do have a new video up on the channel. Well, new podcast episode, so you can listen to it. You can't really watch it. It's not really a video, is it? Uh, but that is episode 30 of Dark Dark World. 
the skull at Linden Lake. So you can check that out. Please share this. All that good stuff. You know the drill. Stuff in the description. All that. I'm Jordan Crittenden. This is the Dark Dark Vlog. Be safe. Be kind. And I'll see you next time.